Tottenham season starts now, is what I wanted to say after the North London derby last week. But as we know, things did not go anywhere near as to plan as we would have wanted it. Losing that game, picking up just one win from our first four Premier League games this season. But after the win against Coventry, we return home on Saturday afternoon for a game against Brentford. A winnable game, a game that we should not be having too many problems with. But we all know Tottenham, we all know how things can and usually do go, so it's never going to be that easy, is it? But alas, we are back for another preview. And the feeling around the club at the moment is just a little bit strange. I think I think the midweek game against Coventry was a real shock for everybody. I think it was a game that not many of us were expecting. I don't think many of us were expecting Ange Postacoglu to make so many changes to that team that struggled so much against championship opposition, albeit championship opposition that took Manchester United right to the wire and arguably we should have beaten them in the FA Cup semi-final last year. But Coventry themselves, I think, made seven changes. Spurs made eight from the team that lost in the North London derby on Sunday. And it was just all over a really, really concerning performance. Probably the worst Tottenham have played under Ange Postacoglu since he arrived at the club. So to be able to come away from that game and win still and score two late goals in the manner and the fashion that we did is a positive that we can take from that game. And I'm hoping we ride that sort of wave of momentum and I guess adrenaline rush that we would have got at the end of that game into this match against Brentford on Saturday afternoon. Ange has given us the team news ahead of the game. Uh, many of you won't be surprised to hear that Rich Arlison is still out injured, having missed loads of last season, having missed all of this season pretty much as well so far. He is just, um, you know, getting getting paid the big money for, for what at the moment. So he's not available. And unfortunately, it does look like Wilson Odeberg is going to be sidelined for quite a long period after Ange Postacoglu confirmed. It looks like he's done something to his hamstring. So wishing him a speedy, speedy recovery. And it's such a shame because he just brings a different dimension to that winger role. And he, he looked sharp when he came when he started against Coventry in midweek. And he's looked pretty good in, I think, in the games in the Premier League that he's played for us as well. So... Probably going to be at least a month before we see him in a Tottenham shirt again. And it does mean our winger options are somewhat limited to an extent. Brennan Johnson over on that right side, Sonny on the left-hand side, and then probably Timo Werner is, is the other man that Ange is going to use. He doesn't seem to have as much confidence in Mikey Moore as it seems that we thought he had uh, after watching him in pre-season. He was in the squad, Mikey Moore, on Wednesday, uh, against Coventry, but didn't make it off the bench Uh God knows if he'll be in the squad for this game against Brentford. Um, but look, Brentford are a good team. Uh, they played really, really well against Manchester City last week. I think Pep Guardiola came out after the game and said he's never seen a team play like that. I think in the first 30 minutes of a game against Manchester City at their own stadium, albeit as well. But I think there may be a problem with Johan Wisser for Brentford. So if he is missing for them, then that is obviously a huge boost for Tottenham as well. It does seem like uh, a few of our boys have successfully made it through. Obviously, Destiny Adogi was subbed off against Coventry at halftime. He is absolutely fine. We rested the likes of Van de Ven and Romero and Pedro Porro. So they should be sharp and fresh and up for this game. We cannot afford to drop points in this one. We've got Manchester United away the week after. We know that we've just lost to Arsenal. We dropped points and lost to Newcastle as well before the international break. There are no excuses for Tottenham in this game. Thomas Frank has Brentford playing very, very good football. They are very efficient, very effective, and they will, they will sit in and absorb the pressure that Tottenham put them under in this game. We saw it again on Wednesday night, having 70% of the ball, but in the first half, not having a single shot on goal. So Brentford will probably look at that game against Coventry and see it as an opportunity to say, right, we will play the exact same way against Tottenham, um, and, and they will go from there. So we have to be on it. We have to have a game plan, um, and Ange has to be proactive and smart with his substitutions. He has to be on it from the very get-go because we could get punished by Brentford. They could do what they did against City and they could go 1-0 up very early on and all of a sudden it's a long road back into the game for Tottenham and we know we've struggled in the final third. 
Dominic Solanke, of course, came off, I think, 62 minutes into the game against Coventry. Wasn't his best game, but he does still just look like he's trying to get used to things at Tottenham. No doubt he will be starting against the Bees this weekend, and we can only hope and pray that he will get his first goal in a Spurs shirt. That is my tip for the weekend, that Dominic Solanke opens his Tottenham account and gets his first goal of the season, gets up and running. And I really, really hope that Brennan Johnson can carry his momentum into the game. He's obviously called upon off the bench in that Carabao Cup win in midweek and scored the winner, a really, really nice finish in a chance that he could have easily missed. He could have so easily have missed that chance against uh, against Coventry, but he didn't. He took it superbly well. I know he barely celebrated. He looked so dejected after the game, but for me... I'm hoping, away from the fans and away from the abuse that he's been getting that caused him to deactivate his social media, that he can come back into this team and have a real impact and have that sort of just high level of play that we know he can achieve. So for me, Brennan Johnson will be a key player in this game. Dominic Solanke, of course. Kulazewski. Kulazewski could well decide whether we win or lose or draw this game. He is the key factor, I think, in this Tottenham team at the moment. He played so well off the bench against Coventry, and he has just looked the sharpest of anyone in the Spurs squad so far this season. He looked it in pre-season. He looked it in every game that he's played since the competitive season has started. James Madison looked good off the bench. Um, so with all of these players obviously getting a bit of a rest, some of them being called upon, we can hope that we have got a lot of fresh legs going into this one. I know we've got Europa League on Thursday as well, so Andrew will have that in his mind, but there are simply no excuses. We have to start being more efficient in the final third. We know that we can work the ball into those final third areas, but I think out of 16 crosses against Coventry in midweek, one or two of them were successful crosses. That has to change, and it has to change starting in this game on Saturday. Once the goals start flowing, I'm sure they will continue to come and, and players will get their confidence in that final third. But we just look off it, off it. That final ball isn't right. That final finish, that touch isn't right. We need to start just shooting from the edge of the box. Eve Basuma's back. He loves a strike from outside of the box. Get him involved in things. We have so much talent in this squad and it's being wasted at the moment because we are simply not making the right decisions in the final third. I get that a lot of emphasis is on the wide players and getting the ball into the box. That's absolutely fine. But even that's not working at the moment. So you have to mix it up. You have to change it. If Solanke comes deep and he's got space on the edge of the box, I just want to see him have a go from outside the box. I don't care where it goes. If we're shooting from outside of the box, that is a different dimension that we can bring to this team. So this Brentford game is going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one, but... For me, I am feeling positive about it. I do think that Tottenham are more than capable of picking up three points in this one and really getting their season rolling finally after five games. So I'm going to go for a 3-1 Tottenham win. I think it's going to be perhaps a 1-0 lead to Tottenham and then we might get pegged back or 2-0 and then Brentford get one and we make it a bit difficult for ourselves. But I'm fully back in the boys to get all three points at home in this game. I will be going to the Carabag game on Thursday night and I'm going to try to put a match day vlog together for the channel. So keep an eye out for that. Let me know what your predictions are for this game down below in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. As always, come on you Spurs. Please don't let me down this time. I just need to enjoy my weekend. Have a good one.